Everybody knows that episode. The episode was remade for the movie and just became one of the most, I guess, beloved episodes for fans in general of the Twilight episode, uh, of the Twilight Zone series. And Richard Donner did this episode here, man. Everybody, Double Toasted Live is coming to New York on September 10th. Hey, that's my big birthday weekend, so help me celebrate with you. You can get your tickets right now over at DoubleToasted.com or go to X1Entertainment.com forward slash double dash toasted dash Brooklyn. Hey, there's a limited number of all access tickets and VIP tickets. They're going pretty fast, so go over there and get your tickets now. Hey everyone, support our Patreon, which helps us to continue bringing you our live streams, videos, and podcasts while bringing you new content such as exclusive live streams and animated shorts. Now, you are a little bit younger than me, baby. I don't know if you know about just this. A this just a little bit. Yeah, a few years. You know, more than a decade. So, you know, this could be something that's lost on you. But I know my man Oz, he heard the news about this today. Very, very sad news, but also I got to give a congratulations to my man, Richard Donner. Richard Donner passed away at the age of 91. Look, we don't like losing people who have had an impact on our lives, our culture, people that we've looked up to, people that have brought us joy, but damn, boy, you you, you made it to 91. Because some people are saying, well, what, what did he die of? People, let me tell you something. Once you go past 85, you died of just being old. Yeah, <laughs> you, you don't need a reason anymore, no. right? He, did he have cancer? No, he had 91 years. That's, that's what happened. <laughs> Richard Donner died at the age of 91, man. Look, if you make it to 91, congratulations. I mean, I can't really be sad about it, man. Especially when you're a director who made not one, not two, but several, several movies that had an impact upon cinematic and pop culture. Richard Donner, man, we're going to talk about some of the things that he's done. Uh, Oz, I know mm-hmm. that you, uh, you know about this man right here. Oh yeah, no, you know, this is is uh, you know the the very special one that everybody knows about. That's the one that got me, you know. But when I saw that movie, I don't know if we're gonna say it or not. But we go, we're talking about movie, it. Yeah, you you keep saying that movie because everybody yeah, knows. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If I said you know, I saw that movie years ago, and I never knew what the director was or who that was. I didn't, could care less. I just knew that I saw the certain individual doing things, right, and it was being taken care of very seriously. It was it was taken forward to with thoughtfulness. And I'm like, wow, okay, who did this movie? And I looked it up, and it was this man. Richard, Richard Donner. Donner. Actually Rich- brought this character to life and made him pretty much a household name if he wasn't already. And y'all know what that movie is. Everybody, I will ask, I say everybody, but, you know, there's some naysayers out there. Somebody's always got to be different. Somebody's always got to be an asshole about something. But most people would agree. They would say, you know what, at least in this current age right here, you got your Batmans, you know, you got you got all these new superhero properties out there that are, man, finally, we got these things that are mature, things that are taking the superhero genre seriously. But some people go back and say Richard Donner was one of the first in this current age to do it with the movie that everybody knows what I'm talking about right now. You do not remember me. If we put this segment on YouTube, if the, Mia, she was trying to do Superman, and she tried to make the Superman sound or the music when he pulls his shirt apart, and she straight up did Popeye. Let me see here. What we got? You ready, Clark Kent? Fixing your glasses. I'm your Superman now. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, that's Popeye. Oh, just... <laughs> <laughs> it's about the same thing, though, you know. Don't let it slide, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I give it to you, though. I ain't seen somebody like you combine <laughs> Superman and Popeye. That girl put on... She did this, and she pulled her shirt apart and said... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, no. You're disrespecting this man. But people, before the MCU, before the DCEU, before the PU and me and you and whatever, there was Superman. That was the movie that. The movie. Yeah, that was the movie that that that. You know, when people are talking about. 
comics and comic books and movies, they and other TV shows and whatnot, those were all for kids. Superman, 1978, that was the one where your mama and daddy wanted to go see this movie and you went right along with them and everybody walked out almost in tears because how great this movie was, man. This was the one that appealed to so many cross generations and Richard Donner was the one that brought that to life right there, man. It was a, It's an amazing film, really. I mean, I don't, I'm like everybody. I don't like the end of it because it's kind of stupid, but the rest of the movie is right. amazing. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was a movie that, you know, the tagline, what was the tagline? You will, you will believe a, man, believe can a fly. man can fly. I was like, woo, what? And there he goes. <laughs> you know, Gene Hackman, mm -hmm. he, made, uh, he made a great Lex Luthor he did. in Superman. With hair. With hair. Well, that's actually a wig. Even in the movie, he had a wig. But there's a story here that Kevin King sent me. And uh, I guess... Gene Hackman had a mustache and didn't want to shave it, and then he shaved it for this movie, and Richard Donner said, the mustache, it's just got to go, he said. No, no, the mustache is not going. This is what Gene Hackman said. I'll tell you what, I'll take mine off if you take yours off. He looked at me and he said, oh, yeah? I said, yeah. He said, okay, okay, all right. He was in the makeup chair. I said, Stuart, take Mr. Hackman's mustache off, and he started to shake. I said, Stuart, take his mustache off now. So Stuart used, let me see, Stuart used an electric razor to cut it off. He shaved it clean. Gene was sitting there and he looked over and said, okay, now it's your turn, pal. Mm -hmm. He says, I looked at him and just took the edge off my mustache and peeled it off. He looked at me and his neck from his head to his shoulders started to throb. And I knew he was going to beat the shit out of me. He looked and then a smile came onto his face and he said, as he started to laugh, he said, you know what, you got me. I owe you one. From there on, he became, to me, one of the lights of my life as both a friend and a great actor. That's how you get things out of people. I could have locked horns with him and said, it comes off. And he would have said no, and we would have hated each other. So that's how you get a performance. They put their trust in you. They ain't no trust. You lied to that man. You fooled the guy. You fooled the guy. You lied to him. There ain't no trust. You betrayed him. <laughs> like, you make people trust you and then f them over. Yeah, that's the best way. Yeah, no, you should have said that's how you get people to do what you want. You lied to them. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Crazy. And what I respect about Richard Donner, the thing is, is that I, I, if you've ever listened to me talk about film, You've heard me say that I have so much respect for directors who can do so many different types of projects, have an eclectic portfolio. They can go in and tackle different kind of genres. Um, you know, in addition to like thrilling the world with a superhero property, the man was able to go in and do pretty much adult action with, well, everybody knows what I'm about to say. He's a criminal's worst nightmare. Gun! Oh, oh, oh. Shit, what we know about Mel Gibson today, he would have shot that mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look out, it's a nigga! You know, <laughs> we know what Mel Gibson would have done. That, of course, oh. is Lethal Weapon. You know, that spawned a franchise. Lethal Weapon is known for. I used to love these movies when I was a little kid. Lethal they, Weapons? Yeah, they, they used to show it on TV in Turkey, and we were like, yeah, that's fun. That's oh, Lethal fun. Weapon is great, man. Lethal Weapon. Who would have known that Mel Gibson would have been teamed up with an, a, the abusive husband from The Color Purple? <laughs> <You know? laughs> and they would have made such a great team. Danny Glover, uh, Mel Gibson. I mean, this was this is one of the ultimate cop buddy films, man. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, these, we had cop buddy films before, but Lethal Weapon really was kind of a template, a modern template for how cop buddy movies were done, man. And that was that's a rated R franchise right there. So mm -hmm. you have him going up and doing comic book movies. He's doing this this uh, uh, pretty much a, a adult action franchise. But then the guy could turn around from all of that and do something that's pretty much for the kids. Of course, that is the Goonies, man. The Goonies is something that you know beloved by kids, man. Now it's not a you know some people say it's not a perfect film, but for a lot of kids out there who grew up on this, uh, it's perfect for them, man. Ooh. Goonies are good enough, and they love this, man. It's it's a silly ass movie, but it's a kids movie too, man.
Shit, I was about 14 when it came out, so it wasn't one of my favorite things at the time. But it's still, you, you were know, a little too old for it. I yeah, guess. but for you know, for but for a guy who was directing comic book movies and you know these uh, these really. Uh, 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 you know, I guess. Well, like I said, more mature-oriented action movies. You know, mm-hmm. this is to see a guy be able to tackle all these different kind of genres, all these different age groups. All you know, it's 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 man, he's a amazingly talented guy. This is just a guy who just loved directing. You know, uh, but the now the thing that I regret because I said, look, the man died made to ninety-one. I'm not sad about it. I mean, I'm you know, I'm sad for the family that's gonna miss him. But damn, man, this guy made it to ninety-one. Hey, no regrets, man. You made it. You you impacted so many different generations across so many different d- demographics. But the thing I do regret is that I I learned about this man more after he died. And that makes me feel kind of I'm disappointed in myself because there's a lot of things that he has done that I love and had no idea or forgot that he did. One of my mm-hmm. favorite episodes of the Twilight Zone is this classic episode right here. <laughs> He's like, oh, shit. The hell? He's like, I don't know if I'm drunk or high. Should I wake this bitch up and let her know it's a grim on the plane? Yeah. <laughs> She'll call me crazy. Yeah. And I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that what is, what is yeah. that uh, that uh, that now that is uh, William Shatner in the classic episode of the Twilight Zone with the Gremlins on the plane. I forgot what it's called, Terror at a Thousand Feet, uh, or whatever. But uh, somebody says a Bigfoot on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows that episode. The episode was remade for the movie and just became one of the most, I guess, beloved episodes for f- fans in general of the Twilight episode. Uh, of the Twilight Zone series, and Richard Donner did this episode here, man. Uh, yeah, it looks that looks silly today, but back in um, look, if you caught this for the first time, those were <laughs> believe it or not, this man looked like a bal- a furry balloon or doing a gorilla suit. That's cl- that's cutting edge technology back then. He's yeah. like, yeah, I see you, Shatner. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, I see but you. He, but even now, just watching it, the concept of it just so out there. You want to see how this ends. It really yeah. is, man. I mean, I don't give a fuck if it, if it looks like a dude in a costume or not. What's this motherfucker in the costume doing yeah. on the wing of a plane? <laughs> what the hell is this? And William Shatter, he's just like, like ooh, Whoa. that shit is kicking in. <laughs> I knew I should have smoked that shit fuck on this plane. <laughs> the thing is that creature is on the plane wing, and it's not getting any wind, you know? like, it's like No he's wind not, resistance, I know. He's just going like nothing happening, you know? Kevin King called me up and he said, uh, "Hey man, I gave you a little, some, a few things and some tidbits and some information about Richard Donner. I'm sure you know that because you you spoke about this movie before and you have a fondness for it. I'm sure you know a few things yourself about Richard Donner's involvement with The Omen. I'm like, what, wait, a minute, what the fuck? He did that? Of course, wow. The Omen is about the son of Satan being born as a, already a little." Evil ass looking child, Damien. You know, you know how Karen is today, where nobody wants to name their kid Karen because now Karen is considered to be uh, a bitch. Uh, nobody mm-hmm. wants to name their kid Damien after this movie because yeah. Damien, well, shit, that was just an evil ass name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everybody thought if you named your kid Damien, he was gonna be at one point the possessed devil. by the devil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your kid was a demon. Damien, Damien is a. Uh, even with this movie being as old as it is, this is this movie had a uh, uh, Gregory Peck in it, uh, Lee uh, Lee Remick, uh, Damien. yeah, Damien the Omen, man, Damien the name became synonymous with like sat- satanic shit. Yep. Um, it's very close to demons, so. yeah. Damien. But Damien, Damien was a cool name before, until this little bastard right here. <laughs> <in. laughs> There's a story. There's so many stories behind that to show you how good of a director. Richard Donner was, and, and this is probably why he was able to work with kids and make something like The Goonies and even make Superman so appealing as it is. He just knew how to work with kids, man. Like mm-hmm. that that smile on Damien right there, that smile looks evil as fuck to us right now. But to get that, <laughs> to get that smile, Richard Donner being the great director that he is, 
he had to make that kid smile by making jokes about farts. <laughs> the last scene of the movie, Dick was so clever. You smile, and suddenly you see this impish little grin. He couldn't hold it in any longer, and it was absolutely perfect. <laughs> Your kid's like, he, he, he farts. <laughs> 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 Satanic farts. <laughs> that was, uh, I heard that, that story after it was sent to me today, and I was like, damn, man. You know, you talk about how children and animals are hard to work with, but Richard Donner, being the pro that he is, knew exactly what to do. He, <laughs> he, just, he found the way. <laughs> That hey, is funny. Hey, kids. Dad. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're like, hey, kid. Oh. <laughs> Farts. <laughs> and kid's like, Farts. That's funny that he does that, because that's what I uh, do to my kids now. That same thing. Don't don't you laugh. I don't see no teeth. <laughs> don't see no teeth. And they just start laughing. That's funny. It yeah. works. It works. <laughs> Got to give it to the kid. He waited for a while. And yeah. And finally, it was <laughs> and it's funny that he wanted to hire that kid because that kid beat the shit out of him. When they were auditioning, they were, they they wanted to audition for a kid who was violent because, well, it's the son of the devil. Why wouldn't he be kicking people's asses? And he came in, auditioned, and that kid, the way he got the role was, when I say he kicked his ass, he actually kicked the opposite end of that. He had him by the nuts. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> and Dick says, cotton, and play. the kid doesn't quit. Everything. And he, he was a good kid. I, I would not have wanted him to be my own. <laughs> <laughs> and that kid looking over there like, hey, Dick, how your balls? <laughs> hey, how you feeling, Dick? <laughs> so you didn't, he didn't want the kid to act. He wanted the real uh, He, he wanted an actual demon. That's, <laughs> that's what he wanted. real demon kid. Yeah, he wanted a spawn from hell. <laughs> That's the omen that they're talking about. I had no idea that he directed that. Um, and here's something else that I did not know he had done. Oz, I don't know if you remember this. Do you remember the show The Banana Splits? I know you remember that, right? Yes, I remember that. Mm -hmm. You ever heard of The Banana Splits, babe? No. Banana Splits, it was... You know tasty. what? I'm going to show you something. Banana Splits is weird. What do you say? Town Tasty? <laughs> <laughs> but we'll see about that after you see this. The Banana Splits, it was... It was a weird show, man. Because... The show was uh, mostly about the antics of these uh, of these 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 cartoon characters, but these characters were really guys in costumes, like mm. mascots at a theme park. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, they play in the band, and they would show cartoons and hang out and do crazy things. And most of all, most of all, they had a they had a catchy ass intro song. <laughs> I do, man. That's back in the day when you should go off on a theme song. Back in the 60s, 70s, they went off. Why kids go crazy for this, right? It was because they were, they, they was a bunch of like characters in, in mascot costumes and they were just flipping all over the place and bouncing around and having fun. They, mm -hmm. And they would show cartoons. But the thing is, what was weird about it, because they, they had about three or four cartoons that came out of this, but they also had one live action cartoon. And it was an adventure cartoon about modern day pirates messing with his family, and it was called Danger Island. <laughs> you know, I like I like that monkey man. <laughs> There's a monkey over here. He didn't want to deal with any of this shit. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this monkey right there. What the fuck y'all doing? <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. It's a damn shame when I'm the one the most common sense in the room. <laughs> uh, Danger Island movie. was uh was was crazy because uh I do you remember Chongo? From Land of the Lost? No, that's Chaka. <laughs> oh, okay. Nah, I don't know that. Chongo, the craziest the craziest thing about Land, I mean, now you got me thinking Land of the Lost. Craziest thing about Danger Island is that my man here, they had this black dude on there on the island. Now, I don't know. He was just hanging out on the island with this other dude. It was like this Mexican guy or something. Uh, and, Why? And, Nobody and, knows. But the dude, like, like, the black dude was smooth. Like, he was real suave for a dude who's been on the island for a long time. Well. He was like, hey, what are you doing on my island? But then he would yell at this other guy, uh-oh, chango! And, the, and his friend would lose his shit. <laughs> You think I'm exaggerating. Look at this. Oh. 
He's like, look at this dumbass up here. He's like, you on them shrooms again? <laughs> that dude, <laughs> that dude been smoking some shit on that island. <laughs> Damn, man. He like, look at this. He said, he high as fuck right now. Look at <laughs> that mother. He's been eating them shrooms on that island. He is high as fuck right now. <laughs> and he does some zip line shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he would spend the whole series doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Does he talk or say anything? Yeah, it was one. There was one moment he was like, <laughs> uh, "Could you repeat that, please?" <laughs> <laughs> no, damn, John better go. him than that brother doing that craziness. <laughs> he got paid. He got paid to smoke some shit and just run around his island acting crazy. But that was—I uh, didn't know. I didn't know that Richard Donner had directed some episodes of these, man. I was about to say that was <laughs> Richard Donner. Get, Richard Donner is responsible for giving this man drugs, right? <laughs> <laughs> I thought they said that was Richard Donner. So wait a minute. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh oh, Richard! <laughs> He's like, all right. Okay, I, I like the way you pulling that rope out. Like, oh, I gotta catch this motherfucker again. <laughs> oh, he's up in the tree again. <laughs> Danger Island. Oh, oh, Chango. Intervention for Chango. Somebody said. <laughs> Excuse me, Chango. Chango can talk perfectly, only not with his mouth. I mean, sometimes those uh, bird calls and cat calls. And bird calls, and bird calls, and bird calls. Just shut the fuck up. Hey. <laughs> Let me do the talk. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do the talk. <laughs> well, folks, that's one of the things I just wanted to bring up is that Richard Donner, man, I there was a lot of stuff that I loved growing up, man, and I did not know that he had done it. I feel bad about it now, but feel great for all the stuff that he gave us, though. And there's probably a few other things out there that I did not <laughs> see. Some people said, you know what? In honor of Richard Donner. Show Chango just one more time. All right. Well, you know what we'll do? We'll let we'll let uh we'll let Chango. Chango have the last word about how he felt about Richard Donner. Richard uh Donner meant a lot to people, but Chango, how how would you say Richard Donner affected your life? Excuse me, Chango. Chango can talk perfectly, only not with his mouth. <laughs> no, <this> is- <laughs> Now, if now if you didn't need something for uh, a battle for Earth tomorrow, I'd say is Chango worthy enough to be a uh, sub alert? Yes, yes, Chango, oh, yeah. man, yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can somebody give us a, a Chango sub alert tonight, please? <laughs> hey, rest in peace, rest in power, whatever you want to say. But hey, much respect, much respect to my man Richard Donald over here. Gave us a lot of, uh, so much entertainment. Somebody say he did Lady Hawk. So many things. So many things that he's done, man. And I really appreciate that. And I, again, apologize to you, Mr. Donna, for forgetting some of the things that you've done that I have loved so much. But believe me, wherever you are, you got my full respect. <laughs> Anything else? What would you laugh at? Like he cares. He like, does care. Like, How dare yeah, you? Yeah, How dare yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How dare you? <laughs> he, he, he loves all. He loves all his fans. Yeah. <laughs> uh, whatever. I'm gone. All right. Leave me alone. Like I lived 91 years. Did all this shit. I'm cool. <laughs> uh, is there anything you want to say? Nah. Peace out, player. <laughs> 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 Thanks.